Irish teacher jailed over woke nonsense. That's the headline from Sky News Australia. And that story's going global. It's all about a teacher in a rural Irish community who found himself on the wrong side of the law. He refused to stay away from the school, which had suspended him summarily for raising continuing objections to using the right pronouns for a pupil who was transgender. As a result, the school brought him to the High Court. The High Court asked him if he would stay away. He refused and was jailed for contempt of court as a result. Clearly, Enoch Burke is using the courts to his advantage in order to highlight what he feels is the unjust treatment of his case by that school. Days ago, Enoch was brought back to the court and again he refused to give the undertaking, vowing that he would remain in Mountjoy Jail in Dublin until such time as his eventual demise. Now, some Irish media are turning on the Burks and Mick Clifford in the Irish Examiner says that the world tires of keeping up with the Burks. He admits, however, that Enoch Burke and his homeschool siblings, there are in fact 10 of them, 10 children in that family, homeschooled and all outstanding high achievers. What's to complain about? Well, it's an impressive education, he admits, but perhaps class time could have focused on other topics and he's essentially demeaning all of their actions. Well, I felt I had to respond. I couldn't let him away with that. And so I did in an article entitled, What if Enoch Burke was a Muslim? I'd like to share that with you. What if Enoch Burke was a Muslim? His biggest problem is that he's not a Muslim. If he had refused to use gender pronouns because it conflicted with the Quran, we'd be falling over ourselves to accommodate him on the basis of religious tolerance. But he is a devout Christian and Irish media is hostile to such beliefs with their own religious fervour. Tell me they would persecute a Muslim teacher in precisely this manner and I will call you a naive fool. This is not a level playing field. That secular hostility extends to the point of intolerance. The same intolerance as found in the school where Enoch voiced his religious objections to being forced to buy into condoning the dubious medical benefits of surgical transgenderism. I say dubious because the UK Tavistock Clinic cheerleading such surgery has recently been closed after a review. But as far as the Irish examiner is concerned, Enoch Burke, currently incarcerated in Mount Joy Jail, is simply tiring us all out with his antics. He and his siblings are nothing but a nuisance. Welcome to the double standard. When Mick Clifford was Enoch Burke's age, radical court theatrics in pursuit of social change were applauded for helping to sweep traditional values aside. Indeed, petrol bombs and violent attacks on police were but ammunition in a just war of change. By comparison, Enoch Burke has not been charged with a single act of violence, intimidation or threat. But in leftist lore, merely being a stalwart Christian without violence and using the courts to seek redress puts you beyond the pale. In Clifford's hit piece, there's no acknowledgement that the Burke family are an activist family campaigning peacefully for what they see as necessary social changes. There is no redeeming value in such acts as seen by secular eyes. For example, when Enoch's sister, Amy Burke, challenged the procedures in her Workplace Relations Commission hearing over unfair dismissal, she's just a nuisance. No mention of the fact in Clifford's article that the Workplace Relations Commission has never ruled in favour of a single applicant subjected to summary eviction from retail stores despite having valid medical mask exemption. The state's arms are above criticism and WRC's victims, complaints, are just tiring. More bias when Clifford reports on Enoch, Amy, Isaac and Kezia taking a high court action over being banned for life from college societies in NUI Galway, the university in Galway. 
the examiner says the High Court threw out the case and accused the Burke siblings of misuse of their own Christian society's funds. The article by Clifford, however, fails to report the reason the case was lost. NUI withdrew the lifetime ban to thwart justice, making the case moot in the judge's eyes. It also fails to report that the Burks have challenged that misuse of funds allegation with a copy of a cheque proving that claim false. Again, when another sibling, Jemima, challenged Chief Medical Officer Tony Holohan at a COVID-19 press conference, Clifford says others thought her intemperate in a viral video. Indeed, how dare some lowly Christian take on one of the top bishops of the secular medico-religious establishment. One man's nuisance is another person's hero. Mick Clifford is old enough and wise enough to know this. His blindness does not reflect well. Mirrors do reflect well. Mick should take a look in one and see if he can spot another zealot. It's time to convert. As for the Burks, the path ahead is clear. They should all immediately change religion and claim the Prophet as their new saviour. The Muslim faith has much to recommend it to any Christian and the benefits would be immense. Enoch could voice his transgender religious exemption and the school would flagellate itself with remorse for even having impinged on his sensitivities and would find a tolerant and Christian way to accommodate him. And can you see the High Court incarcerate a Muslim in Mount Joy Jail as it did a Christian? Indeed, in theory. But imagine the national and indeed global outrage. I doubt the school would force that issue. This is not a level playing field. So-called tolerance in Ireland is bounded. It does not extend to those damn nuisance Covid Pharma sceptics. It does not extend to those damn nuisance climate sceptics. It does not extend to those damn nuisance Ukraine war sceptics. And it does not extend to those damn nuisance Christians. First, they ignore you. Then, they laugh at you. Then, they call you a nuisance. Then you win. Prepare to win. Get ready to win. Because it only takes one. And we are not one. We are many. We are legion. Prepare to win. Get ready to win beyond your wildest dreams because we are the future. We are the tide and nothing can resist us and no jail can hold us. <laughs>